In December of 2019, the Utah Jazz traded longtime franchise piece Dante Exum together with two second round picks to the Cleveland Cavaliers in exchange for six foot five guard Jordan Clarkson. While at that time, this was seen as a kind of decent trade for the Jazz as they were looking for an affordable trade deadline piece to strengthen their playoff push. But fast forward to this day, and that trade looks like one of the best finesse jobs in the entire NBA, and the Jazz front office have proven that they know what they are doing all along. As anyone who watches the NBA consistently must be aware by now that Clarkson is one of the biggest reasons why the Jazz are enjoying league-wide recognition because of their great play. And Clarkson is indeed the clear-cut frontrunner to win the 6th Man of the Year award as of the moment. While even if you're not a fan of the Utah Jazz, you'd find it quite easy to see how good this guy's been playing. And with a quarter of the season already in the books, the 28-year-old has put up averages of 17.4 points and 4.3 rebounds which are career-high numbers for him, together with 2.1 assists while also having 45, 37, and 90 7% shooting splits. And Clarkson is producing this numbers while playing only 26 minutes per game. Well definitely, you can say that the Jazz have been getting their money's worth after signing Clarkson to a 4-year 52 million extension this past offseason. And for a guy who was drafted 46th overall by the Washington Wizards in 2014, who was immediately traded to the Lakers in exchange for cash, the guy definitely looks like a steal with how good of a player the guy has become. But how good has Clarkson's production been so far? Did he really change a huge part of his game to be a more effective scorer and is his efficiency even sustainable throughout the season and what actually makes him the clear-cut 6 man of the year award winner right now. What's good guys, it's Rero Balls here and today we'll dive deeper and look into why Jordan Clarkson is more than the 6th man for the Utah Jazz. But before we move on, it would be great if you guys could hit that like button right now. It only takes a second of your time but it helps me get my content out there to more people and it would be greatly appreciated. So let's get to it. Jordan Clarkson is called the flamethrower for a reason, and we've seen why, as he dropped a 40 piece against the Sixers by way of 65% shooting from the field and a ridiculous 8 out of 13 rate from deep. But honestly, this isn't really new for Clarkson. I mean, the guy was already a walking bucket even during his early years in the league. Even as a rookie when he was Kobe's teammate with the Lakers, although he only started a total of 38 games, he was still able to average 15.8 points during that span of time, which was enough to earn him a spot in the All-NBA Rookie First Team. And even as he only played a total of 25 minutes and shot 1 out of 16 from the field in the 2018 NBA Finals while playing for the Cavs alongside LeBron, nothing really changed for Clarkson honestly. We already know that the guy is going to shoot the ball no matter what cause that's just how he plays. Well yeah, sometimes the guy will mix it up. Instead of pulling up from 3, he might dribble to the middle of the lane and shoot a floater or he may drive all the way to the hoop. But the bottom line is, Clarkson just wouldn't pass up on any chance to shoot the ball because the guy never really lacked the confidence to do that. But the problem is, that same confidence that he had also caused people to label him as a bad shot taker or a trigger happy guy. While that may have been true before, Clarkson was always the kind of guy who would heat up and win you a game or two but he would also shoot you out of other games as well. He'll put up some impressive numbers but he usually had to take a whole lot of shots to get there. But I think more than anything, that reputation that he had was because the guy has been in teams with losing records his entire career except for probably the 2018 Cavs team which made the NBA Finals of course. And I think what that tells you is that the guy was taking a lot of shots because his team needed him to score and this was especially true during his time in Cleveland after LeBron left. But basically, everything just seemingly changed for him since being traded to the Jazz. Fast forward today and Clarkson is being feared by opposing teams because he has rebranded himself as the picture of an efficient volume scorer. While throughout his career, the guy was always a volume shooter to be honest and his true shooting percentage hovered around 53% during his first 5 seasons which is a decent number. But this season, the guy is putting up a career best 58% true shooting clip. And so the question is, what exactly changed for the guy? Well, one thing that you can point to is how Clarkson's shot selection has undergone a huge transformation. Looking at his shot chart from 2018 to 2019, which was his last full season with the Cavs, you'll see that 24% of the shots he took were long mid-range shots which were shots between 10 feet of the basket until the 3-point line. And that year, he also shot 37% of his shots from behind the arc. But the next season, 
season in 2019 to 2020, his shot attempts from the mid-range area dropped to only 11%, while his three-point attempts increased to 47.6% of all his shots. And so far this season, Clarkson's mid-range shots are down to only 5.8% of all his attempts, while his three-point attempts have increased to a jaw-dropping 57% of his entire shot output. So basically, you'd notice that the mid-range shots, which were a huge part of his game just two seasons ago, have almost completely been out of his game as of this season. And I think what this tells you is that, since arriving in Utah, Clarkson has completely understood the importance of taking higher efficiency attempts. The guy is just becoming more aggressive behind the arc while also making more plays in the paint as opposed to taking a lot of mid-range jumpers which are considered low efficiency shots these days. And as we know, the modern NBA is a league which prioritizes a space and pace kind of basketball. And as we can see, Clarkson buying into that idea has obviously done wonders for his scoring. But if you look at it further, it's not only his improved shot selection which can be credited for Clarkson's rising efficiency. Well yeah, you can say that he's simply matured and he's been making better decisions as a scorer. Of course that may be true, but more than anything, I think the guy is just simply making more shots than he's used to. Because throughout his first 5 seasons, the guy shot 34.5% from deep. But since moving to Utah, he has improved to 36.8% and this season, that number is even up to 37%. And also, if you look at his percentage from floater range which is within 3-10 to 10 feet of the basket, he has shot 44% from that area before being traded to Utah. But his number has also been up to 50% from that range for his entire tenure with the Jazz. But of course, you also might wonder if these highly efficient numbers which he has been putting up so far would be sustainable in the long run, or at least for the remainder of the season. Well, if you take a look at the types of shots that the guy has been taking since being traded to Utah, then you'll most likely know the answer. Well, the thing is, Utah's offensive system didn't just allow Clarkson to change the location of his shots, but it also allowed him to shoot in much better offensive situations. While since playing for Quinn Snyder, the guy has been shooting tons more catch and shoot attempts than before. In his last full season with the Cavs, only 22.8% of his shot attempts came in catch and shoot situations, but this year, that number is almost at 30%. And right now, Clarkson is also left wide open more than ever, as in the 2018-2019 to season, he only took 45.8% of his shots wide open, but this season, that number is up to 52.3% as well. And further, the guy is also shooting much earlier in the shot clock more than ever, which means he's not trying to bail his team out at the end of possessions. As in 2018 to 2019, he took 75.3% of his shots with at least 7 seconds left on the shot clock, but that number is also up to 84.5% this season. So with all these, you can see that Utah's system has just put the guy in an ideal situation where he can maximize his offensive talents. While it's also not hard to see that you'll be more open on the court when you're sharing the floor with guys like Donovan. Mitchell, Mike Conley, and Rudy Gobert as opposed to when you're surrounded by guys like Tristan Thompson, Alec Burks, and Sadie Osman. So you just gotta appreciate Quinn Snyder and how he has optimized Clarkson's game without necessarily limiting his bad shots but by encouraging him to take better ones. Because as you can see, Clarkson is just allowed to shoot as much as he wants in Utah and that's possible because Coach Snyder has put him in a position to take the right shots. So if you ask me, well I think it's possible that Clarkson's percentage just will most likely drop a little bit towards the end of the year simply because teams will probably pay more attention to what he's doing, which means the guy may see less open shots moving forward. But I think he would still most likely produce the same numbers even if his percentage just drop as long as he just takes the shots given to him. And after all, the guy has already embraced playing in Utah's system and I think he'll just grow more into it moving forward and that would definitely just make him better. And right now, Clarkson really looks primed to win the 6th man of the year award. Well honestly, with the exception of Montrez Harrell last year, the 6th man of the year award has been given to relatively inefficient high volume scorers in recent years. Well, if you look at it, Lou Williams averaged 22 points and 20 points when he won the award in back to back seasons in 2018 and 2019. And he did that by averaging 29.7 minutes in that span while shooting at an average true shooting percentage of 56%. Well, right now, Clarkson is putting up slightly lesser numbers, but he's also doing it with less minutes played per game and also with a higher true shooting percentage. And for real, I think there's really not a lot of competition for 
Clarkson so far. Well, last year's winner, Montrez Harrell, still putting up solid numbers for the Lakers, but the thing is, he just doesn't have the same impact that he had last season with the Clippers. Well, Lou Williams has been a three-time Sixth Man of the Year winner, but for the first time since 2015, the guy is averaging less than 14 points a game this season, and is also playing the least minutes of his career since 07. But I think the closest competition for Clarkson would be Chris Boucher of the Raptors, who's putting up 13.6 points, 6.8 rebounds, and 2 blocks per game off the bench. The guy has been solid for the Raptors so far, but the problem is, winning is a huge part of determining end of the year awards, and Toronto isn't exactly in the same tier as Utah right now. So overall, Jordan Clarkson is hands down the 6th man of the year as of the moment, and it's not even close. But in reality, who actually cares if he wins it or not, right? He's more than just a 6th man for this Jazz team because although he comes off the bench, he's playing starter minutes because it's probably just really hard to take him out of games. Because aside from his scoring, he's got a great feel for the game, he's also surprisingly grabbing a good number of rebounds, and he's also a plus defender as of the moment. And to top it off, the guy just isn't afraid to take shots when it matters the most, which I think has been the most important part of his game since day one. Well, Clarkson's tendency to take one shot after another used to be seen as a bad part of his game, but right now, it's a huge reason why Utah is currently the best team in the league. Thank you for sticking until the end of the video and as always feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Also please subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this video. Again this is Rero Balls and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.